Elise could hardly believe her eyes as she watched Zack and Delaney. Henry noticed Elise glaring at Zack and Delaney, but misread her discomfort. Are you feeling sick? Do you need to go home? You look like you're in pain. You're right, Henry. I'm not feeling well. I should go home. Zack tried to stop Elise from leaving, but Delaney tugged on his arm. You heard her, sweetheart. She's not feeling well. Just let her go. Zack looked devastated as he watched Henry leave with Elise, wrapping an arm protectively around her shoulders. Zack decided to follow Elise home, despite Delaney's protests. As Zack discreetly followed Elise, he noticed that another man was also tailing her. A man with dark hair and a black ski mask. Zack felt that if he could solve the mystery of Jonathan, he might be able to win Elise back. Zack decided to hire a private detective to help him uncover the mystery. He met the private eye in the back of a Lower East Side diner a week later. Zack slid into a booth across from the detective, and the detective produced a package of photos. The first photo featured an older man. This is your wife's grandfather. Since you said they were close, I thought he would be the logical starting point to look for connections. Zack examined the photo. He gestured for the detective to continue. He immigrated to New York from Italy, but it's not clear why he came. The family appears to have been wealthy, but then something happened to make them lose what they had. The detective paused, and Zack prodded him. That's it? Have you found anything about Jonathan yet? The detective shook his head. No, not yet, but sir, this work takes time. If there's anything to find, you can rest assured I will find it. The detective left the diner, and Zack sat by himself. He didn't know what to do, but he knew that he couldn't continue on in this way. He showed up at Elise's Sunset Park apartment and rang the buzzer until she finally appeared in the doorway. This is starting to look like harassment. What do you even want? Just sign the divorce papers and get out of my life. Elise moved to slam the door shut, but Zack grabbed it and held it open. I can explain. Please just let me in and let me apologize. I won't take too much of your time. You've proven that your apologies don't mean anything, but if it'll make you go away, sure, have at it. Elise let him into the apartment and sat on her sofa, waiting expectantly for him to say whatever he'd come to say. When he hesitated, Elise laughed bitterly. You've seen Delaney recently. You smell like Chanel number five. No, I just haven't changed my clothes. I haven't been able to sleep or do anything since our run-in the other day. I'm angry with you, but that's disgusting. Wash your clothes. What you saw with Delaney wasn't what it looked like. Elise scoffed. I've heard that line before. Zack held up a hand. Please, let me finish. Delaney asked if we could get some coffee and hash things out between us. I'd intended to end things with her and was trying to let her off easy, but then you saw us and I could tell that she had planned for you to see us together. How could she have planned it? I didn't even know I was going to be at the coffee shop until Henry invited me at the last minute. Zack hesitated. It's possible she's having you followed. I've noticed a man with black hair and a ski mask following you. I have a stalker and you didn't tell me? And when did you notice? Oh, yeah, when you were following me around yourself. This is so messed up. It's not like that. I was worried about you and wanted to make sure you got home safely. I love you, Elise. If this is how you treat the people you love, you have serious problems. Get out. Elise, please, let me stay. We can work things out. Elise dragged Zack to the door. Get out! I don't ever want to see you again. Have your lawyer call me when the divorce papers are signed. Elise slammed the door shut after Zack finally left her apartment. She'd tried to appear tough in front of him, but as soon as he left, she let herself cry. Elise slipped into her pajamas and dried her tears. She crawled into bed and fell into an uneasy sleep. Her dreams took her to a memory from 13 years ago, to a hospital where she had seen Jonathan for the last time. He was lying on the hospital bed covered in injuries, 
with an oxygen mask on his face. Elise sobbed at his side and watched as he slowly became invisible. Elise screamed his name, but he continued to disappear. From behind her in the dream, she felt a man place an arm around her. At first, she thought it was comforting, but it started to feel more like a chokehold, an anchor that was driving her down to the depths of the sea. She turned around to see Zack. Elise woke up with a start. She took calming breaths and tried to lower her heart rate. Zack had never appeared in her dreams about Jonathan before. It was time to bury her feelings and memories of Zack, no matter how much it hurt. Hi, I'm Elise. Want to know my story? Then download the Pocket FM app and listen to the exciting episodes of After the Divorce. Now, 